strategies, tactics, and schemes. Oh my. Hello everyone, and welcome back down here to The Gamer's Den with me, your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire, and today we are wrapping up the build guide for the first edition Pathfinder Swashbuckler class. And today we're going to talk about the overall strategies and tactics you will want to be employing more often than not as a swashbuckler. And to begin with, you have to keep in mind that you are a frontline melee fighter. You're going to be using your attacks of opportunity, which we are boosting with the combat reflexes feat, to uh, use your opportune parry and repost to negate attacks about to hit you and poten potentially make an attack back. Given the full attack bonus progression that we have and the fact that any light one-handed piercing weapons are treated as finessable, you are getting your dexterity bonus added in on top of that attack while uh, substituting it in for your strength at any rate. And so this means that chances are that you will have good odds of counterattacking against your opponent, not just defending a negating attack that would otherwise hit you, but still getting the benefits of dealing damage to your opponent through your attacks of opportunity. And given that you're probably going to be focusing down more often than not and repeatedly making thrusts and stabs at the same target, you're going to stack on quite a bit of damage fairly rapidly on that target. But you're going to want to avoid two weapon fighting, especially for this build. It negates your precise strike ability, which adds your swashbuckler level to your damage, which also counts in on your reposts. So if you're a level 10 uh, swashbuckler, that's 10 points of damage per attack that you're losing out on, on top of everything else you get, which... Well, let's assume that you have a 22 dexterity. That's a plus 6 bonus to damage right there. Uh, we'll assume, just for argument's sake, a plus 2 magic uh, rapier. So that's another plus 2 for a total of 8 right there. So, with your class level thrown in there for damage, that's another 10. You'd be losing out on over half your damage potential right there. Not counting anything in the die rolls or any other bonuses that you may have. Such as from weapon specialization, which will bump that up to a plus 20 total. And then you have other effects that you could be factoring in, like power attacking. If you followed this guide and have a sufficient strength for the overall damage build. So, uh, so again... It's important that you avoid two-weapon fighting and use a buckler, or at least a parrying dagger that you can use defensively and get a sh essentially a shield bonus out of it. Not anything you want to attack with, you just want to use it purely for defense. And the nice, for me at any rate, a nice flavorful, I accurate thing is, is that this is how... Uh, fencers used to fight using a buckler paired with uh, uh, with a rapier to fight against opponents and bucklers are were incredibly he effective historically and as were parrying daggers so again it's thematically appropriate historically appropriate and it's mechanically effective so all the way around this is just a win-win-win or at least in my book it is and then another thing to keep in mind, though, is that your will saves are terrible, but your Charmed Life class ability will help by letting you add your Charisma modifier to a save. In particular, the will saves are probably going to be your most important, just because there are so many abilities that can affect your, well, that will affect you through your will saves. Uh, you have illusions and enchantments and, and curses, so many effects that will just attack you at that point. So having charmed life in place will help keep you from succumbing, or at least help to save you from succumbing more often than not. Uh, and that will be massively useful to you uh, throughout many encounters. Also, speaking of encounters, when you're in combat, use power attack when you're fighting groups of more easily hit enemies to clear away that chaff even faster. Avoid using it on higher level opponents unless that you see they can be more easily hit. The idea being that uh, higher level opponents are going to have better AC, they're going to have a better armor class and be more difficult for you to hit. And it may be a situation where taking a minus two or a minus three to your attack bonus, even with uh, 
feats like weapon focus and magic weaponry coming in to help boost your overall a attack ability that can still add in a crucial penalty to your attack bonus when you really want to avoid it. So, unless it turns out that, hey, the fighter in your party, your paladin, or whoever else, they rolled kind of a middle roll, but they still hit the target, save power attack for clearing out wider swaths of enemies. And also, given that you have a higher chance at critical hits, this means you have an opportunity to inflict status status effects, excuse me, on more susceptible enemies. Don't forget to utilize these feats. And the nice thing is, is that even at higher levels, you're going to find mortal flesh and blood enemies or opponents who are just vulnerable to critical hits anyways. So even though those, uh, stat those critical feats may not apply against all opponents, for example, uh, constructs are going to be uh, immune to critical hit effects, these will still be very useful. And track your panache. Killing enemies gives you a point each time. Dealing critical hits will give you a point each time. And the blouse of the boastful bastard gives you a point when you take a critical hit as well. But these are just the general strategies. Uh, keeping track of your panache will allow you to constantly keep out a steady flow of the different panache abilities and allow you to adjust and adapt to a wide variety of combat situations. So there's certainly the tactics that you can get into can certainly be much more in depth, but overall with this general overview, this is what you're looking at. And what do you think? Did I miss the mark or have I scored a direct hit with this with an incredible critical success? Let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are and what you might add in or change or switch up here. And also hit the like or dislike button and let's engage in the discussion. And if uh, also, given that we have wrapped up another class for Pathfinder, first edition Pathfinder, I'd like to take votes now on what you would like to see coming around next. In a previous video, somebody had commented that they're interested in seeing other hybrid classes such as the War Priest, and I'll go ahead and count that now, but go on down there and let me know your thoughts. And if you haven't done so already, go ahead and subscribe to the Gamer's Den and become a regular member here, and get updated and notified the next time we upload more content here to the channel. But with that said, I've been your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. Thank you all so much for your time, and you have yourselves a good night.